Hello everyone, it's me, Vivi, and welcome to another Kingdom Hearts video. There's been interviews left and right regarding the development of Melody of Memory. But first and foremost, Tetsuya Nomura has mentioned that in 2022, while the 20th anniversary of the series basically happens, he even mentioned that the next project is already in development. Whether or not it's the next numbered installment, Kingdom Hearts 4, we don't know. I remember Nomura explaining in Kingdom Hearts 3's Altmania that we should at least expect one game before Cage 4. Perhaps he meant two games, looking back at what he said. Now why do I say this? Why do I believe two games? Well, people speculate another game like Dream Drop Distance, where it focuses on two characters, Sora and Riku. They like to call it DDD2, but why do they call it that? Why would they imagine a second Dream Drop Distance? Well, we do have a secret ending in Shibuya and the whole true ending sequence with Yozora. And knowing Nomura, perhaps the bad ending might still be relevant. Because nothing is a coincidence in this series. Everything in Kingdom Hearts means something. Because Tetsuya Nomura. If we do get another game that is not titled Kingdom Hearts 4, I'm imagining Sora and Riku in Shibuya that being the next game they're working on currently, aside from, you know, Melody of Memory. Plus, if you really think about it, not all secret endings always hinted at the next numbered installment. For example, Kingdom Hearts 2's secret ending, that hinted at Birth by Sleep, a prequel. So if we go with that idea that not all endings hint at the next numbered installment, perhaps the secret ending which we got to see in Kingdom Hearts 3 hints at a game which is not. Kingdom Hearts 4. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts 4, there's rumor of Frozen 2 appearing in the next numbered installment. If Kingdom Hearts 4 does get Frozen 2, I hope Square Enix gets more creative freedom this time because Frozen in Kingdom Hearts 3 felt very lackluster in terms of Kingdom Hearts characters being involved within the world of Frozen, if you understand what I'm saying. Sora, Donald, and Goofy just felt like cameos. I want Frozen's premise in the next game to be Elsa and company meet Sora and company. Not the other way around. Not Kingdom Hearts meets Frozen. I want the characters' interactions to be bigger if Frozen does come back. Now if Frozen does happen again, I mean I'm not surprised. Not even to the slightest. Hold up, Vivi. Where is this rumor even coming from? Emery Kaya. One of the many guys that talked about a rumored Kingdom Hearts series appearing on Disney Plus over on Twitter. In the end, this ain't confirmation. If you're curious about this rumor, I'll leave the link to the article in the description below. But hey, with that out of the way, we got more details surrounding the development of Melody of Memory. Melody of Memory, or MOM, what people like to call it, reminds us of the acronym for the Master of Masters, M-O-M. Now before that, when we got the reveal of Melody of Memory through the 2020 Kingdom Hearts trailer, people believed this black-robed figure would be the Master of Masters. So yeah, people believe this guy is the Master of Masters. Melody of Memory, same acronym, M-O-M, as the Master of Masters. Nomura said, it's all according to plan, and starts laughing. So there you go, folks, that's Tetsuya Nomura for ya. The acronym for Melody of Memory, M-O-M, Reminding us of the Master of Masters, MOM as well, it was completely intentional. With that said, regarding the development of Melody of Memory, we got series producer Ichiro Hazama, series director Tetsuya Nomura of course, and co-director Masunobi Suzui, that got interviewed basically left and right. The story goes as follows. About five years ago, Hazama and Suzui loved the idea of Kingdom Hearts getting a theat rhythm style game, you know, a musical game like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, how those two IPs were treated that way. Now, when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, all those years ago, it was a bit difficult. It didn't really kickstart at that moment. A few years later, Disney spoke to Nomura, saying that, yeah, we're up to the idea of having a Kingdom Hearts musical game. So basically, that's how Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory was born. They didn't go with the name Theat Rhythm. Instead, they thought they'd go with a brand new title, because at the end of the day, it's Kingdom Hearts. Nomura said they had issues with Melody of Memory being the name at first, because memory overlapped with Chain of Memories. So Nomura thought of basically using the singular form of, you know, memory. 
with Nomura's feedback, Hazama and Suzui took some technical elements and mechanics from Theat Rhythm and applied it to Melody of Memory. The layout of the game was inspired by the series' 15th anniversary musical box-themed website. Of course, they were afraid of the risk of motion sickness. Now that was an important thing to take into account when discussing development. So here's what Suzui added when it comes to working on Melody of Memory. We wanted to incorporate those fun elements of play and make sure that we are leveraging the game mechanics of the original game, as well as bringing in Kingdom Hearts' stylish action and incorporating the rich story behind it, especially the world settings that we've established in our series titles. We asked, how do we leverage and keep the integrity of that? That was our foundation for our approach. The game contains over 140 songs. Of course, not all of them from the series are gonna appear in Melody of Memory. It's way too much. Music, especially from 2.8 and Kingdom Hearts 3, not all of them will be featured in Melody of Memory. They used the concerts as the premise of what's popular in the series in terms of music. From then on, they picked those that were most, I guess, suitable for the game. Now, the way the game works, you use the gummy ship to travel to different worlds within the world trip. That's all you do with the gummy ship. They call this the primary game mode. What this mode gives to players, well, you get to re-experience the history of the series through musical challenges and cutscenes, which they call Memory Dive. As you make progress through these musical challenges or boss battles, not only do you gain stars, which helps you unlock new sections, but you also increase your health. The more health you get, the less game overs you get. You also increase your power as you gain experience, so naturally it should get easier for you. Now you can, for a limited time, unlock Disney characters on the field by hitting special items. There's 47 worlds in Melody of Memory, 31 of which are Disney worlds and 16 being Kingdom Hearts worlds. This game has online mode and local co-op, with two players on screen. Playing online in versus mode, there's a mechanic called tricks, which basically lays traps to the player. You basically both compete for the highest score. Nintendo Switch users will have exclusive free-for-all mode up to 8 players, with a spectator mode as well. The game will have three difficulties, beginner, standard, and proud. For people who don't like rhythm games, there's a mode called One Button Play. If you're really bad at rhythm games, don't sweat it. You'll get through the game with this mode. For hardcore veterans of musical-style games, there's a mode called Performance Target, which adds more enemies on screen and more difficult button maneuvers. If you quickly progress through the world trip, the game will take about 10 hours to complete. Do not expect new music. However, there is going to be two new arrangements by Yoko Shimomura, one for Dilly Beloved, the title screen music, and the credits screen. Cherithi was originally supposed to be the narrator, but since Kairi is the focus of the game, Nomura thought it'd be more appropriate to have Kairi tell us the story. Nomura explains that Kairi will be reflecting upon the history of the series. What I like to call it is, of course, memories. Going through memory lanes of Sora and others who are connected to Sora. After all, Kairi is willingly put to sleep, so they study her heart. You know, the chance they might figure out where Sora is. Now, Nomura can't share more information on the position Kairi is in currently, like why is she really telling this story to us in Melody of Memory, but we'll find out as we play the game. He didn't mention that Melody of Memory would be just a game with no extra story element. He wanted to add something to it, so he wrote a short new scenario. I believe the Kingdom Hearts 3 rendered scenes we have is what he's referring to. Now, a bit of Kairi's history will be delved into as well. Although this game won't advance things significantly when it comes to the story, Nomura felt that uh, at least Melody of Memory would fill the void between Kingdom Hearts 3 and the mainline series. So he thought, well, hopes that uh, this game fills that void by basically refreshing our minds, but to also hope that this game broadens the audience of this series. Now, don't expect DLC or secret movies. Anything of such sort, don't expect it. Game development is in its final stages, and yeah, lastly, this game is coming to the Switch, so with that, people naturally wonder, okay, are we gonna get any of the HD remasters ported to the Switch? Nomura said due to technical difficulties, it ain't possible. Some of you might say, but that sounds funny, how come the HD remasters can't run on the Nintendo Switch? I ask myself the same question, so I 
don't know what's going on at Square Enix. But Nomura did say that some of the games that he worked on in the past could work on the Nintendo Switch, but he didn't specify which ones. So with that being said folks, this is it for the video. So as for all of the articles and translations, I will leave all of the links in the description below. So yeah, as usual, if you have questions or anything of such sort, leave it all in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi and thank you so much for watching.